Ken Bostrom Ministries. Beginning January 2018, Ken Bostrom Ministries engaged in a whole new assignment by entering the airwaves of the world. Don't miss Ken and Mary Bostrom Ministries Live. Hey, welcome to our program and thank you for tuning in. We're excited. Uh, I'm excited because I love to teach from the book of Genesis. Genesis is such a major complete book. And I was given a gift uh, last week. It's um, the Passion Translation has just come out with the book of Genesis, and it's just got so many nuggets in it. I just love the way it reads. And uh, so last week, uh, the last three shows, I was going into the intro of the tribes, the 12 tribes of Jacob and the 12 tribes of Israel. And so today we're going to get more into the, the father of the tribes, and his name was Jacob. Now, Jacob's name was changed. Whenever God changes a name, remember Simon, Peter, and, uh, you know, he changed the whole personality of the person. He changed the whole destiny of the person. And so that's what we're going to find out about Jacob today, how God changed him to his destiny. He was not going the right way. So God did a GPS change on him and brought him to his destiny, just like Saul became Paul just like Abram became Abraham. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to use the four levels of Hebraic study and PRDS and uh, uh, Peshat, that means spread out. And it talks about the historical factor, just the literal meaning. What it says it what is what it is. And that's, that's really where a lot of churches stop. Ramez is hint. Uh, it's with the allegory, the symbols, like Jesus, a symbol of uh, the symbol would be the lamb. Um, uh, derash means to search, line upon line, just connecting with, uh, with scripture. This, this connects to the Old Testament, to the New Testament, and back and forth. But my favorite one is sowed. Sowed is, um, could be sod, sowed, and it's a hidden secret meaning. It, you know, it's understood by revelation. When we get into the book of Genesis, there is so much line upon line. It's like an onion. You think you're, you think you're, take off a peel, you're, you're at the onion, you're not, you're still in the peeling. You know, and you keep peeling it back until you get to the real thing. And so that's what we're going to talk about today, because when we're talking about the tribes, when we're talking about the tribes, we're talking about uh, not just historical and not just history, but we're talking about the prophetic because the tribes go all the way into the millennium. We see it in the book of Revelation. We see it in the New Jerusalem, you know, the, the foundation stones, the gates, um, so many different things. Even, even, even the land in the millennial, the, the tribes are going to have a peace. So it's not, it doesn't just stay in the Old Testament. And uh, it relates to us today. Uh, hopefully this week I'm going to get into the first four uh, tribes. And uh, so I'm excited to get into this today. So let's get into it. Uh, Jacob, Jacob's journey to Israel. You know, uh, I'm going to be in Genesis 27, if you want to turn your Bible to that. You know, the grandfather was Abram, Abraham, which means father of many nations. Uh, you know, uh, Abraham was 100 years old when he had Isaac, and he died at 175. He had many other children after Isaac, but uh, all the inheritance went to Isaac. Because he was, he was the one, he was the promised one. He was the promised seed. And um, then their son, their, their son, because, you know, the, the fathers, of, of, the, the fathers of, of Israel are Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Both of them, all three of them carried covenant rights. And co it's a threefold cord that's not easily broken and will not be broken. So we have Abraham was a grandfather. The father was Isaac. His main, na main name means laughter. And um, 
So, you know, I, when Sarah found out she was going to have a baby and she was 90 years old, she laughed. And then the angel said, well, why did Sarah laugh? And she said, I didn't laugh. Yes, she did. But you know what? When, when they had their baby at 100, Abraham was 100 and she was 90, there was much laughter in that household because they had waited for that baby for a long time, that promised seed. And then they, they found a, a, a bride for Isaac, and her name was Rebecca. So uh, Jacob's mother was Rebecca. And in Hebrew, it's Rivka. Rivka doesn't even sound close to even Rebecca like, like we know. But Rebecca means a rope with a noose or ensnarer. And she must have been so gorgeous that when she was born, they said, oh, my goodness, she, everybody's going to want to be her husband. And because she was such a beautiful baby. You know, she was a sister of Laban. We're going to get into Laban a little bit. But she was also uh, the daughter of Nahor, which was Abraham's brother. So really, when Isaac married, he married his cousin. You know, that was, that was real normal back then, that they, they wanted to stay in the same lineage. They wanted to keep their lineage pure. And uh, that changed after, uh, you know, further on the dispensations. But she did, uh, Isaac did marry his cousin. She, her name was Rebecca. And her brother's name was Laban. And we're going to get into that. When we get into, uh, they, they had the twins. And we talked about that last week. Where two nations were in her womb. I'm reading from 2523. Two nations are in your womb, he said to Rebecca. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. And the younger was Jacob. The older was Esau. But when they came out, Jacob was clutching. He was hanging on to Esau's heel, and they called him heel grabber, heel catcher, supplanter. And, uh, but Esau came out very hairy and very red. Now, I can't imagine a baby coming out very hairy. I've seen a baby with a lot of hair, but on the body, I have never seen that. But uh, that's why he was called hairy. And, you know, he was loved by his daddy, Isaac. He was loved by his uh, daddy, Isaac. And um, Rebecca loved Jacob. So they, one was a mama's boy, one was a daddy's boy. So, you know, one was rough and the other one was kind of feminine and uh, not feminine, but like to hang around the house, like to be by mom, you know, different things like that. I don't it, I don't see where he ever went out and hunted and did things like Esau. I think they were like black and white, totally different. And uh, so but when we come into. Genesis chapter seven, verse two. And it came to pass when Isaac was old. Now, he was about 130 years old at this time. Now, he died when he was uh, 180. So this was 50 years before he died. When he was about 130 years old, his eyes were dim and he could not see. And he called Esau, his older son, and said to him, my son. And he answered him, here, uh, here I am, or he nanny. He nanny means here I am. Um, and he said, behold, now I am old. I do not know the day of my death. I don't know the day of my death. And so he told Esau, go out and prepare a meal for me. Go out and prepare a meal for me that I can eat it. And, and uh, you know, a wild game. You know the wild game? You know the deer that I like, the venison? And he, uh, I'm just kind of ad-libbing that one. <laughs> so, but uh, he said, go out and fix me a meal. and." Um, when after I'm done eating it, I'm going to bless you. Well, Rebecca was, was eavesdropping on that conversation. And she said, no, I want Jacob to have that blessing. And so she got the wild game and she cooked it. And she, she talked Jacob into putting on this uh, fur, you know, this hair uh, on his arm and stuff. They wrapped something around that he would feel hairy. And so when he came in, in verse 24, and um, 
I'm going to go 22. So Jacob went near Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, the voice is Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau because they were hairy. And he did not recognize him because the hands were hairy like his brother's Esau's hands. So he blessed him. Then he said, are you really my son Esau? And Jacob said, I am. Now remember, Jacob's name means a trickster. He was a conniver. He was a surplanter. He was a heel catcher. And he said, bring it near me and I will eat my son's name so my soul may bless you. And he brought it near him and he ate and he brought him wine and he drank. And his father Isaac said to him, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him and smelled the smell of clothing and, and blessed him and said, surely the smell of my son is like the smell of the field, which the Lord has blessed. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of the heaven of the fatness of the earth, of the plenty rain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be a master over your brethren and let your mother's son bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be those who blessed you. So he got his father's blessing. And the blessing would be with his father's right hand because that's a hand of blessing. And uh, so Jacob leaves and here comes Esau. And, and um, verse 32, and his father Isaac said to him, who are you? And he said, I'm your son, your firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled exceedingly. And he said, who? Where is the one who hunted game and brought it to me? I ate all of it before you came, and I blessed him, and indeed he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with an exceeding great and bitter cry and said to my father, bless me also, my father. And he said, your brother came with deceit and has taken away your blessing. Once, once one of their forefathers like that blessed, you can't take it back. So he said, he said, I'm blessed. I can't take it back. He has the blessing. You don't have the blessing. So what he said Esau was begging him, bless me, bless me, Father. Behold, your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and the dew of the heaven from above. But the, by the sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass when you are restless, and you shall break the yoke from your neck. You know, that's how it turned out to be. The Arabs and the Palestinians, the, these are the ones, um, the, the Edomites, they're the ones that, that were constantly, constantly had the sword in their hand. And so, you know, what happened then is Esau had such a hatred that he wanted to kill Isaac or uh, Jacob. And so uh, what Isaac did in 28 verse 1, um, he said, then Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said to him, you shall not take a wife from the, from the daughters of Canaan. Arise and go to Padam Aram to the house of Bethuel, your mother's fa father, and take yourself a wife from there, from the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. So he said, take one of your cousins to marry. See, here we go down again, that lineage. And this would be the last time that Jacob ever saw Rebecca. Rebecca is the one that really connived that whole thing. And her, her judgment on the whole thing was she would never see her, her favorite son ever again. Now remember, Isaac was about, um, uh, he, was, he was 60 when he was born. He was about 130. Do you know that, uh, can you, Come on, just, just guess for a minute how old Jacob was when he fled from Esau. Now, I would normally have thought about 30 years old. But when you come into, an, and the Passion Translation uh, comment caused me to have to look and search through this. Do you know Jacob was in his 70s? He was in his 70s when he had to escape from Esau. And it reminded me of, uh, because Isaac, do you know, Isaac lived another 50 years. And whenever I read this story, you know what it reminds me of? Fred Sanford, Fred Sanford of Sanford's son. Remember, he would always say, Elizabeth, did you hear that? I'm coming to meet you, Elizabeth. So Isaac, 
thought he was going to die, and, and God let him live 50 more years until he saw Jacob again and all his grandsons. Um, and so when, when Jacob fled, he, uh, he went to, um, out into the wilderness. He had to travel 500 miles to go to where Laban lived. Now, it's not like now so you can go get on a plane in Houston and be in New York, um, you know, in just a couple hours. It's not, I mean, it, it took weeks and probably months for him to travel. Um, but when he, when, one night he was in, in this place, and it was the same place that Abraham had made an altar. And I don't know if he took one of those stones from the altar that Abraham had laid down, but he laid down and put a stone for his, for his head. Now, that wasn't my pillow. <laughs> that was not my version of my pillow, but that was his pillow because he slept. And when he dreamt, he dreamt that there was a, a ladder going to heaven and that ladder was angels going up and down, bringing messages, bringing messages up to heaven, bringing messages back down. Now, I don't think that ladder was straight up. I think it looked like DNA. In fact, I have a, a, a message that I did. Uh, it's a CD. You can order it from me for, for $5 for the CD. It's called The DNA of the Blood. And, and it it, the DNA of the blood comes down of Jesus comes down from the mercy seat, and um, but when he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on the earth, and des and angels were de ascending and descending on it, and uh, verse twenty one and this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house, and all that you give me I will surely give a tenth to you. Now Abraham tithe. It, it seems like from the very beginning, they knew how to tie it. They knew something. It wasn't in the law. It was in, in the this is how we live kind of thing. And uh, so the tithe. But he, he said, I'm going to tithe. I'm going to tithe everything that I get. And uh, 28.3, I'm going to read this to you. Uh, this is what Abraham blessed him with. Um, not Abraham, Isaac blessed him before he left. He said, may God Almighty bless you and you be fruitful and multiply you, that you may be assembly of peoples and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you, that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger, which God gave to Abraham. Back then, we're still saying that God gave the land to Abraham and that God gave the land to Isaac and all his descendants. So back then, we continually see the land covenant uh, throughout the word of God. Now, when he got into, into the land of Laban, he, the first beautiful woman he saw was Rachel. And he wanted her. She was gorgeous and she wanted him. Now, there was, remember, there's one father, 12 tribes, four mothers. So let's look at what the names mean. Rachel, which is his love, he loved her. Her name means mother sheep, our sheep, a lamb, a mother of the sheep. Uh, her sister, Rachel, who is not very beautiful, she was uh, called tired, exhausted, the one who was making an effort in vain, a wild cow. I mean, can you imagine every time you, you call the, the, um, the, the name Rachel, mother of sheep, my lamb, and then you call Leah, wild cow. And, you know, because what, what her name ended up being was she was just exhausted trying to get the love from Jacob. And um, Bilhah, Bilhah was, was Rachel's handmaiden. And she actually, according to the Lost Books, she was, she, or I think it was the Book of Jasher or the Lost Books, she was born the exact same day as Rachel. You know, their day, uh, their Bilhah and Zilpah were sisters. And their father was, uh, was actually, um, he was, became um, a servant of, of Jacob or Laban during um, a war, during a, a fight. 
and they took the land and they, they took prisoners. And so he became a prisoner. He became a bond slave to Laban. And these daughters were born uh, to, so they belonged to Laban since he was a slave, the children belonged to the master. And so Bilha and Zilpha, Bilha was born the exact same day. Now her name means fear, dread of God, timidity, modesty, tenderness. And Zilpa, she was a handmaiden of, of Leah. Her name means drop, tear, closeness, intimacy, maybe also wet with myrrh. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, now, the sons in their order to the, the mothers, Leah actually had six children. Now, you know, when, when we come to, um, when we come to, um, when we come to the marriage, Jacob loved Rachel so much that he, that he talked to Laban about it. And Laban says, you can work seven years for her, seven years. And so he, he worked seven years to get this beautiful woman, to get this beautiful woman. And um, so when, when he got this beautiful woman, he, he, it wasn't the beautiful woman he was expecting. Laban had outsmarted him. Every Jacob will eventually get a Laban. Every conniver, will all, all, they will always get uh, what's coming to them. They'll get a harvest of their wickedness. They'll get a harvest of their scheming. And that's what, exactly what happened to Jacob. He tricked Esau, and now Laban tricked him. W whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Well, he had two wives. The first one was Leah, and she had six sons, six sons. You know, a son in Eastern culture is amazing to have one son, but she had six sons, and still Jacob didn't love her. And then Bilhah had two sons. Zilpah, another handmaiden, had two sons, and then Rachel had two sons. She had the last two. And so we see all that happening. And so every one of us has, has got a destiny. Every one of us has got a purpose. And you know, there was things that messed up Jacob on the way. He was a conniver. He was in his 70s and he had to start all over. He was in his 70s and he would never see his mother and father again. He, he was in his 70s and he was going to go find a bride. He was just escaping for his life. And, and he messed up. You know, and every single one of us are going to mess up sometime in our life. Life is not going to go the way you had planned it. Life is going to disappoint you sometimes. But let me tell you, keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the Lord. He is your GPS, and he will bring you back into the right course. Just seek him and you will find him for your destiny. God bless you for coming today. Uh, tomorrow we're going to talk, the next time we're going to talk about, start talking about the sons and they are fun to work with. So God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. This is Ken and Mary Bostrom. We thank you for joining us today. We welcome you to watch us on kbntv.tv, YouTube, Facebook, mbostrom2.com. Also listen to us on WRNO Shortwave Radio. Contact us at KenBostromMinistries.org. God bless you today. Ken Bostrom Ministries. www.KenBostromMinistries.org. Don't miss Ken and Mary Bostrom Ministries Live. Contact them at 832-212-1138. 